What's going on boomers and doomers, this is Isaiah, and this is how I would set up the Mayo Gang MGC4 Mark II. So the reason I went with this setup was because I wanted to do something a little bit different, and I thought, you know what? I haven't really had too much experience running as a Grenadier. It's something I've always had an interest in, and I thought, you know what, with the Mayo Gang MGC4 Mark II, why not? Let's address the elephant in the room first and foremost, the grenade launcher. This is the Double Bell M203 short grenade launcher. Now, as you can see very clearly, it's not necessarily designed for this rail system. Now, with that said, I think I did a pretty good job mounting it. Uh, there were a little bit of modification that was required to get it to look this way and to look a little bit more clean. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it might not look as good. The D-Boys grenade launcher can be used with a wide variety of different 40 millimeter style grenades. Everything from a shower shell, some that'll launch a foam projectile, or more specialized types of grenades that you can typically find at Milsim games, which I do frequent. Now, in this setup, it actually can be quite useful, uh, especially in those Milsim games that I've mentioned before. Because I chose the black and bronze version of the MGC4, I wanted to get some, or throw in rather, some tan accessories as well, which is why I went with this tan peck box, and of course, the sort of bronzish tan EG1 style optic. The reason I went with a peck box like this peck 15 here is because I find that it does a variety of different roles very well. Everything from lighting up a very dark room, granted it's not the brightest light in the world, but it gets the job done. But the laser is the biggest reason I actually went with it. I love to paint targets for the rest of my team, especially if I'm using nods, and it gets the job done. Moving back, I am rolling with this new EG1 style optic. Now these are actually being carried by Airsoft GR right now, fairly recently actually, and I've actually been very impressed. I love the look, I love the aesthetic, the sight picture it offers is nice and big, just the way I like it. And again, I think it just ties everything all together. Now in terms of the rest of the externals, it's all gonna be completely stock. Everything from the stock flash hider, the stock magazine, the stock sock, Everything's gonna be basically right out of the box because again, I feel like it looks very good as is. They don't need to change anything. Now, because of the grenade launcher under here, you are gonna find yourself in a specialty role. And that actually kind of is on brand for me. I am a support gunner normally when it comes to my team or when I play Milsim events, I normally run a more specialty role. And I, that, I guess that's another reason why I gravitated towards this. But even though this is set up to be a Grenadier's rifle, at the end of the day, this can actually do quite a bit. Remember, you are still getting a Mayo Gang MGC4 Mark II, which is a very well-versed airsoft rifle that can pretty much do it all. It has the range, it has the accuracy, the trigger response is there, it ticks off all the check marks that you need it to. However, it also adds that another element to it, that extra firepower, which I absolutely love. And again, if you want to go ahead and get this entire package for yourself, if you were considering going the Grenadier route, I highly recommend you check this guy out. What's going on, Mio Gang? Boaz here, and we're going to go over my personal setup for the MGC4 Mark II. As you guys might know, I am a pretty avid Milsim player, along with Isaiah, who also built his MGC4 Mark II according to his style of Milsim play. And even though Isaiah and I both play a lot of Milsim games, we actually play or fill the rules in the Milsim space pretty differently. And so uh, the thing that really inspired my build is to kind of lean into the strengths of the MGC4 Mark II out of the box. Starting with the tip here, I changed out the included square style flash hider that comes out of the box with this gun. I mean, it looks cool, but I don't think that it fits the vibe of a larger Milsim game. So I went ahead and changed it out with something a little bit more traditional with a, just only a little, a subtle amount of flair. So this is the Atlas Custom Works mini muzzle brake. I love the little ports on the top and the big ports on the side, but it's not as long as other traditional muzzle brakes are. So it, it does kind of blend in, looks like a traditional flash hider, but it's not. Towards the front of the handguard, I have the TAC-9 or Ranger Armory uh, mini scout light. I, I wanted to go with a smaller style flashlight because I didn't want to take up too much rail space. And moving up the top is the FMA end goal. I love the capability of the FMA end goal. It is so nice. I love how small it is compared to the traditional tech box. It's so much skinnier, it's smaller, and you still get the great amount of functionality that you get with the traditional tech box. So you get, you know, the included flashlight, if you want to use that visible laser and an infrared laser, which is the reason why I chose this thing, because the infrared laser on this is pretty dang nice, especially if you're running with night vision. It kind of changes the way you play, especially if you end up playing a lot of Milsim games with night vision. Now, moving down towards the bottom of the handguard, I added, I believe these are the Ranger Armory M-Lock rail covers. I just love the amount of texture that it gives you, and it's very low profile, so it doesn't add more bulk to the handguard, and it just gives your hand a nice textured reference point to make sure that you grab the gun the same way every time with your support left hand or your non-dominant hand. And then moving down to the bottom center, 
is going to be the Atlas Customs Works new, I guess it was the anchor style foregrip. It's not really a foregrip. It's not really a hand stop. It's like somewhere in between. And I really like that. Uh, I love that golf ball texture that they put on both sides. And this anchor foregrip is actually completely reversible. So if you don't like that slanted angle here on the front, you can easily reverse it and you get a more vertical uh, plane for you to hold your left hand on. And I just love the way that it conforms around your hand. It kind of digs into your hand the right way, right? You can use this and you can butt it up against a barricade or like a window or like a half wall. And it gives you a very nice, stable shooting platform. And it's made out of metal, it's made of aluminum. And I think it feels so much nicer than a traditional, I guess you'd like polymer foregrip. And now we're gonna be talking about the optics set up here. And it is a little bit out of the ordinary for me just because I don't normally run short dot style optics. I've always wanted to, but uh, because of my personal collection of all KDBA guns, they are very heavy out of the box. And if I added something like this to them, it would just add way too much weight for it to be comfortable or for it to make sense. But because of how lightweight the MGC4 Mark II is, especially for its size, running a short dot setup like this is completely feasible and I love it. Now, the short dot that we're using here is going to be the NC Star short dot scope, and it goes from 1.5 magnification all the way up to six. Personally, when I'm playing with this, I'll probably just leave this around anywhere between three to five times magnification, just park it there, leave it there. And then on the top, I have a Lancer Tactical scope ring mount with the Picatinny section up here on the top, and mounted to that mount is going to be a Lancer Tactical micro red dot. And the reason why I have it this way is because honestly, I think it's way faster to shoot people from a three times to a, one, to a one times, it's way faster to run two separate optics instead of running this singular short dot and, and kind of switching like this. It kind of breaks your concentration, kind of takes you out of the zone, which is why I did the setup that I did. And I love how high it rides because it gives you that nice heads up room because if you're engaging targets close up, like if you're inside a building or again, if you just are shooting at people really close to you, you kind of need to have that peripheral vision. You can't really afford to have that tunnel vision, especially because of the carbine length of the gun, right? It's kind of in between a full length rifle and a really small CQB gun. So I wanted to be capable of doing both very quickly. And as far as the rest of the gun goes, pretty much everything is stock or as comes out of the box. I love the Gen 3 style pistol grip that it comes with. Now the stock, I did away with the stock. Why? Because I thought they're cooler stocks that we offered here at Airsoft GI. So I wanted to look cool, make the gun look cool. So I believe this is a Tech 9 collapsible slimline mini stock. I, I think it just complements the overall look of the gun. It just makes it look way more sleeker, way more cooler. And the only drawback I think honestly is access to the battery compartment is gonna be pretty tough. Uh, that's one trade-off you get with it, but I love how little space it takes up in your shoulder. I love how slim it is, and so I don't have to negotiate my face to get a proper cheek hold on the gun. The only thing that's missing here on this MGC4 setup that I came up with is going to be a paint job, okay? So if you guys are interested in replicating the setup, or if you want to pick up this exact setup here at airsoftgi.com, make sure to also bring with you a couple cans of spray paint to give it a sick paint job to complete that Milsim look. Overall, I think that the MGC4 setup that I came up with handles really good. I love the way it feels in the hands. It's very balanced because all the weight is more towards the rear of the gun instead of the front. It balances out pretty dang well. And I love how perky and responsive the gun is. Most of the time, I'm just gonna be shooting in semi-auto, so I'm glad that Cisco made sure to include the right internal components to make sure that the trigger response is crispy out of the box. And especially with, again, the optic setup that I have the option of shooting a target's farther out of distance or get a really nice close up, a personal with this micro red dot on top. It just perfectly expands your capability and allows you to take it to a Milsim event and not have to worry about anything happening to your setup or wishing that you did something else with your gun. All right, guys, it's time to take a look at how I built the MGC4 Mark II the correct way, because it's my gun. Everything that I put on the gun is correct. If you know me, I would say I am more of a casual airsoft. Now, I do play larger events and things like that, but on any given day, you would find me at a regular field going for, you know, the regular casual play. And with the MGC4 Mark II in mind, we did make the airsoft gun for everyone to be able to just grab and play. And I decided to make my build around accessories that I like that everyone else likes because it's right. 
Again, this is my gun. So let's take a look at what I did to my build. Starting from the front of the gun, I have added the Atlas Custom Works SOCOM style blast shield with included flash hider. Now, this is a very stylish blast shield. That is QD for the flash hider. And I think it adds a very clean look to the overall gun. And it meets very well with the rail and barrel. Like there is very little gap at the front of the barrel. And I think it's just very clean. Now, moving on to the handguard, we have a 14 inch sleek and slim M-lock rail. And I wanted to maximize its potential. So I decided to add the Atlas Custom Works M-lock hand stop kit. Now with a slimmer rail like this, I do think the Atlas Custom Works hand stop kit works very well and looks so damn good. Because of how slim it is, I do like having a hand stop. It feels a little bit more comfortable for me compared to a vertical grip. You know, that's my personal opinion, but again, it's my gut. So it's the correct opinion. On the right side of the gun, I do have the Atlas Custom Works Scout flashlight. This is a very bright flashlight that has a good throw and adds a lot of functionality to your airsoft gun. I love how this Scout light looks in particular and how it mounts directly onto the M-Lock rail. And honestly, guys, everyone should be using a flashlight in airsoft. It comes in handy more often than it doesn't. At the top of the airsoft gun, I have the Atlas Custom Works PEC-15 with functional flashlight and laser. Why did I choose a PEC-15 when I already have a flashlight, you might be asking? Honestly, because it looks cool. Granted, you do get more usability with the PEC box, especially if you want to play a Milsim event, you do have the laser and the different style of flashlight, so you can utilize it to its maximum potential at a Milsim event. Which, by the way, Boaz, Isaiah, come here, invite me. When do I get the invite to go to the Milsim event, huh? Hmm? Also at the top of the rail, I do have the Ranger Armory dual pressure switch connected to both the PEC box and the flashlight. This way I can easily activate both the flashlight or PEC 15 very easily with my thumb without having to reach over and extend and do all this weird mumbo jumbo. I just have it all streamlined here for easy functionality. Now moving over to my optic situation, I was gonna choose a short dot, an LPVO, but Boaz chose that. Hey, honestly though, if uh, this red dot setup came out earlier, I would have picked the red dot and said, I'm kind of jealous of your setup. Well, it's too late and now I have it. So I chose the Atlas Custom Works MRO style red dot. Now, Atlas Custom Works, bring it in. Closer, closer, too close, back it up. Okay, here's the thing. The MRO comes on a 45 degree offset map. Why? Atlas, please. It would have been clean with just a regular high profile riser on there, but you you had to be difficult, okay? So then I had to get your MRO high rise mount. I mean, it looks great, it's fantastic, but please, Atlas, just release it with a standard optic mount and it'll sell much better, I promise you. Now this riser puts it at a 226 height, which is actually really great because it makes it higher than what iron sights would normally be sitting at and it makes it much easier to aim especially if you run a lower mesh mask like i do you know i don't know what it is the mro is, is just so ugly but it looks good especially with this this high rise mount like it breaks up the silhouette of like a normal optic and it'll turn heads but i don't know man it's like it's like ew in like a good way kind of like you know how like a dog can be really ugly but that's what makes it adorable but oh my god you're so ugly that's what the mro is now for the pistol grip and the stock i left them the way that they came out of the box because i chose them originally this is how they come out of the box and this is how it should be leave it alone now my inspiration for my mgc4 mark ii build was more of a pmc style loadout where you kind of just need everything on the airsoft gun and have it as easy and comfortable to shoot fast between targets. And with the high rise optic and the hand stop, I think it does that very well where you're able to just aim comfortably and transition to targets uh, really simply. And with the added flashlight and other accessories, it gives you a little bit more usability in different types of scenarios. So think of this as the all around airsoft gun. Speaking about an all around airsoft gun, that's what the MGC4 Mark II is supposed to be an all-around airsoft gun. So this accessories kit is the correct way to build it out. So get these accessories. Actually, as a matter of fact, this is available as a combo at airsoftgi.com. So you can get all of these out of the box. 
All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed our MGC4 Mark II build challenge video. We had a lot of fun filming it and we just wanted to show off that the MGC4 Mark II can be built however you want and can do anything you want in airsoft. And the main goal of this video was to inspire you to build out your own airsoft gun. If you are interested in any of our builds for the MGC4 Mark II, they are available at airsoftgi.com as field ready combos. And you can support us there directly by getting your airsoft goodies. Make sure you subscribe for more content and give us a thumbs up. We're trying to beat the algorithm and show the world that airsoft is pretty damn cool. My name is Cisco and I'll see you guys later.